I am Alexei Rayevsky. I am with uh, Zekurion, and I wanted to share uh, what we know about using AI for cybersecurity. Our team is not as big as many um, IT and uh, uh, internet giants that talk to you today on this conference. So um, let me say a couple of words about us. We are uh, on the cybersecurity market starting 2001, and our main focus is uh, on DLP systems uh, and uh, uh, confidential information, leakage protection information. We are a Russian company, part of uh, Russoft and RBP, but we are among the best DLP vendors worldwide uh, by Gartner, IDC, and Forrester, and the smaller ones. We have all the possible licenses to um, do what we do, and more than 10,000 clients uh, purchasing um, our products uh, in all the countries of the world. Uh, AI in cybersecurity, it, we are not pioneers, of course, in this field. This story is uh, used in the market for quite a while, but most of the time AI is used to protect the uh, company against external threats. There's many attempts to use AI uh, to fight against viruses, especially the unknown ones, so the ones that you don't have in the database. Uh, besides, uh, the network protection, anomaly detection, traffic anomaly detection, and stuff like that can be um, very popular for the AI usage. But speaking about DLP systems, there are peculiarities. DLP systems are aimed at our own users. So those are not external hackers or actors, but the users that know very well where the information is, which information has value, how well it is protected, they often know a lot about our uh, internal infrastructure, and this creates extra complexity. To protect against uh, leakages, you need to control both the internet channels and external devices and analyze the information that's been passed on them. So to identify whether the information that is being sent is uh, uh, OK to transfer or not OK, you also need AI. Until recently, DLP systems have uh, used classical algorithms. There were no specific neural nets, uh, stuff like that. The uh, most that we had was machine learning based on uh, bias algorithms, uh, um, based vectors. Um, methods, but there's a number of uh, tasks uh, where the developers have to solve in uh, DLP systems, and we decided to try to use uh, neural networks there. So first of all, our graphical templates. The task is to find whether the uh, image file has some template, some um, marking. It can be a signature, usually uh, signed documents are of interest, uh, especially if they are signed by the uh, leader of the company or uh, the stamped documents, or it can be uh, a document that follows a specific template like uh, passport or driving license scans. So here is how and we get the task. So the data set is limited because usually we don't have a lot of documents or a lot of templates to train the neural net on. And we have decided that we can use a neural net. Uh, we, we are using currently YOLO v3 to find those templates. We also 
use the characteristic points algorithm. It was not uh, sufficient uh, for in terms of its speed and uh, other characteristics. So sometimes it would uh, find the template or not. So, we based our thinking on the fact that we have limited amount of data and we need to automate the process. So we took, it was a test task, it's not in production yet, we took a um, stamp, some uh, fake stamp that we just imagined, and put it on a number of documents that look like official documents. And we got that data set that we see on the slide here. And we, based on that data set, we just have one scan of this uh, step. So for this data set, we ran the training of uh, the, the neural net. We used the dark net framework using GPU, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070. It took uh, a thousand iterations, took us just uh, 20 minutes. You see the graph. And we got uh, the system to uh, find that stamp on the documents that it never saw. Easy. So, you probably would like to get some uh, some numbers in terms of the, uh, speed and the parameters like false positives and false negatives. Uh, it's just a demo stand for now. It's not working in production, so there's no use of uh, in uh, uh, you know, giving you all the numbers. But we can say that it's at least order of magnitude better in terms of both accuracy and uh, speed of execution. Um, what else? Um, training automation. We would not be, of course, uh, Photoshop those stamps on uh, the documents each and every time. So we've created the algorithm to uh, get a data set out of uh, uh, one picture. So you have that reference file with uh, clear background, just one image. If we talk about a signature or a stamp, then we can create a utility that will put the pictures from the reference files on the needed amount of templates, turning them on uh, to different angles. And also, uh, we need to put it on a wide background. Then uh, we run auto labeling for YOLO v3 and automatically create configuration files. We can label it automatically because we know where we put that picture and we can create the configuration files. So during this process, we've um, moved to YOLO v3 tiny to um, reduce the model from 250 to 33 megabytes with roughly the same accuracy and speed. So not much reduction. Next. Uh, passport scan detection. This was a tough task. Previous algorithm was um, somewhat able to identify the stamps, but for the passports and the driving licenses, uh, it didn't work. So we decided to uh, run two-stage uh, identification. On the first step, we just create a neural net that identifies the uh, passport, and then to improve uh, accuracy, we have another neural net that would find the specific objects like the stem on the passports. And moving to experimental data, we took the data set uh, with 108 uh, pictures of passports that we found on the internet. Both 
the scans and the photos and some empty blanks that you see on the slide in the upper, screen, upper part of the screen. We did the labeling ourselves, not that many pictures, and uh, with YOLO label uh, it took us uh, 6 to 12 hours to train that neural net. So, depending on different parameters. Uh, the result was uh, quite satisfactory. We took 20 scans of passports, uh, 20 of 20 were recognized. Photos were also well recognized, even if they were cropped or put at an angle. And with the previous algorithm, we could not even dream of having such things. And to compare, we put a foreign passport and it doesn't detect it, so it works quite well. So false positives uh, were uh, not working. And we also trained on the American passport uh, because it has, they have like that picture, uh, a lot of different uh, characteristic uh, points. So the previous algorithm was just uh, going crazy analyzing um, this picture, but here, even without uh, big experiments, things were found on Google. We trained, and the result was good. So, moving further, the second issue we've uh, solved using uh, neural networks is uh, the thing about attempting to make photos of the screen like DLP nihilist. They say that the uh, DLP does not protect from making photos of the screen. In reality, this is not true, because uh, if you have uh, 50 channels of, uh, f to leak information and you can block 49, then the fact that you cannot block one does not mean that you need to s still have uh, 49 open. Still, we decided to uh, explore this uh, opportunity and having previous experience that I talked about, we've uh, used YOLO. We also use two neural networks. One identifies the smartphone, the other one identifies the camera. Uh, why too? Because if you just uh, identify just the smartphone, the neural network can be mistaken for with a lot of uh, rectangular objects, and uh, you can have false positives. Mm. So, here's what we got. Mm. Uh, the data set was not uh, not good. We wanted to use Google Open Image because uh, the pictures were all there. And we just used Google looking uh, for uh, back part of the smartphone, uh, back of the phone, back of the iPhone, Samsung Galaxy back and so on. So we labeled them with the yellow label. And you see here how the labeling went. So for the testing we put this those uh, screens uh, with us just uh, uh, showing the hand with an iPhone uh, uh, or Samsung V9, and you see we had 711 uh, shots, and the numbers here are quite good. We've calculated them; uh, they are very positive, most probably they will be okay with us and with our customers. The performance was uh, also a positive sign. We thought that we will have to run a separate server for this, but um, this library, uh, YOLO V3 Tiny, was uh, very small, and in terms of speed, 
it was not uh, very demanding. We ran it, ran it on two stands, and uh, one with the uh, RTX 2080, and another one with a trained uh, the usual processor uh, with Core i5. So with the first one, we had um, 14 uh, FPS. On the second one, we had 9 FPS more than enough for what we need to do. So I would ask to um, turn on the video to demonstrate how it works. So that's it for my part, and uh, I'm happy to answer your questions.